Now then guys, I'm back again with some more 22 Magnum content for you all because I just don't make enough of it. And today we're going to be looking over the Guncraft AR-15 in 22 Magnum. So if you're thinking that this is the same rifle that I've always had on the channel, well, you're kind of right, I suppose. But uh, it's transitioned, it's now post-op. Um, it, we've removed the Northwest Custom Parts hardware and we've installed the Guncraft hardware. And as such, it now self-identifies as a Guncraft. So I've been running the Guncraft parts now for a couple of months. Um, been absolutely test driving the shit out of it. I've got about 1800 or so rounds on the gun now so far. Uh, some of you might have seen it in one of the last videos I did, uh, if you're eagle eyed and, and sad like that, sad as me. Anyway, this video is going to be kind of a comparison to the Northwest Custom Parts, uh, working parts of the gun. I'm not going to go over like the, the rifle build as such, it's more the function of the rifle, you know, the accuracy, your reliability, that type of thing, uh, comparing the internals. So yeah, let's get on with it. So what parts have actually been changed in the rifle? Well, it's it's the barrel, the bolt and the buffer. Uh, those are the only three WMR specific parts on the gun. Everything else is like standard mil spec fitment, like the receivers, handguard triggers, etc. You can kind of put them on any build from a 22 long rifle to a 223 and beyond. Uh, so it's just those three main parts that we're interested in. But before we get into it, just a little bit of background really on how I ended up with these parts in the gun. If you don't know, this rifle was originally a Northwest Custom Parts up, running all the Raven hardware in it. And um, I kind of always had trouble with it from the off. So when the Guncraft stuff hit the scene a year or two ago, I did think about kind of uh, changing out, but decided to persevere with the rifle, got it running what I thought was pretty well. And so I just decided to stick with it. Now, fast forward to a couple of months ago when I started making a knob on myself on the internet, posting videos and specifically the 22 Magnum and comparing it to the 22 Long Rifle and the guys from Guncraft got in touch after that video and said they thought that their hardware could potentially solve some of the issues I was still experiencing with my build um, so yeah I got to kind of speaking with Rob from Guncraft he had a, a spare barrel and bolt from like an early production run uh, that he had no rifle for so we arranged a transfer got them sent up to me uh, to put in the gun it's important to know that I bought and paid for these parts, they haven't been given to me to review or anything like that, they're 100% mine. I did also tell Rob when I was speaking to him that if the parts were shit, I would uh, let you all know that they're a shit, so let's find out. So first things first, let's actually look at the parts themselves. We'll start with the barrel. Uh, now the barrel I've got on this one, this is a Assassin, made in Birmingham, but we won't hold that against them because uh, Sasson actually make uh, really good barrels. So the one in this gun is an 18 and a half inch heavy profile barrel. Uh, it's got a one in 14 uh, right hand twist in it. Sasson use cut rifling in their barrels as opposed to button like a lot of uh, manufacturers, but um, there's a lot of debate about which is better. To be honest, uh, you can make your own mind up about that. Just, just something for you to know. Uh, but yeah, heavy profile, 18 and a half inch, one in 14 twist rate. We've got a half a 28 UNEF, Threaded muzzle up top, uh, barrel's nicely crowned, nice machining, nice finish on the barrel. The barrel extension as well is very nicely machined, it's kind of one piece in with the feed ramp. Uh, nice polished feed ramp on there, very uniform. If you saw my installation video of this barrel into the rifle, you'll know it was a really, really tight fit into that receiver, like extremely tight. I had to get some serious heat into the receiver to get it in there. Uh, which is really good, um, tight tolerances like breed accuracy, so that's nice to see. Comparing that to the Northwest Custom Parts barrel, we've got, um, they're very similar on paper in terms of spec. The Northwest Custom Parts was uh, made by a company called Green Mountain. It's an 18 inch barrel. Uh, it is a fairly heavy profile, but uh, not as heavy as the Guncraft, and it's also got some fluting cuts in there to reduce the weight even further, and it, it's quite noticeable. Uh, we've got the same threading on the muzzle, half by 28, same twist rate, 1 in 14, although I believe the rifle on that was button cut, not, um, it was um, button rifling, not cut rifling, sorry. Where things get a little bit different is towards the back end near the barrel extension. You can see we've got a 
the feed ramp is a separate piece there, it just kind of slots in. Uh, unfortunately, when my rifle was new, that feed ramp was loose and would wobble about, uh, so it kind of caused a lot of issues. You can also see the machining on the feed ramp and the chamber entry there are fairly poor. They look like they've been kind of fettled by hand to kind of make the best of a bad job, but we're still left with that big ledge there. Uh, for the from the transition from the feed ramp to the chamber and that would cause me a lot of headaches in the beginning Right then onto the bolt. It's a single piece of machine stainless uh, It's the same diameter over its whole length um, Unlike the rave in one which kind of tapers down about halfway down and thins off towards the rear One of the most noticeable differences is that we've got a brass weight in the back of the guncraft bolt And that means the bolt weighs around 15 to 20 percent more than the rave in bolt that extra weight helps retard the timing and keep the bolt closed longer during firing so we don't get as much powder back in the action. Uh, apart from that, kind of very similar, uh, we've got the same extractor, we've got the same firing pin, we've got the same ejector cut on the bolt. Slightly different profiles like I say at the rear and also on the underside but for all intents and purposes they do the same job, you know, they're, they're feeding the same round from the same magazine in the, in the same rifle. Looking at the Rave in bolt from Northwest Custom Parts. It's made of again a single piece of stainless steel. This time we're case hardened, and it's an extremely well machined, well finished piece. Uh, it's let down slightly, I think, when it was converted to top charging. The, the the gas key on the top of mine when I got it was slightly loose. The cap screws that hold it down were were fitted nice and snug, but they were either too long or the drilling and tapping in the bolt wasn't deep enough, and that they bottomed out uh, before the gas key was snugged down. Compare that to the Guncraft and you can see it's it's fitted down there, it's got really good staking. Just uh, just attention to detail on a little bit of assembly maybe, um, maybe lacking I think. Buffer wise there's not really much to say, both rifles use a single piece turned down bit of lightweight polymer. Slightly longer than a standard 223 carbine buffer, uh, just to stop that over travel on the bolt, the bolt doesn't need to uh, reciprocate as far. Um, yeah, they're both way about the same, they're both the same profile as, for all intents and purposes, they're the same part. So, fit and finish on the parts is a bit of a mixed bag really, we've got some really nice machining on the Raven bolt and things like that. It's let down slightly possibly by the assembly um, and some of the fitment uh, issues as well there. The Guncraft, we can see we've got slightly nicer machining, more uniform machining and I guess just a bit more attention to detail really, that nice staking on the gas key things like that and the, the, the kind of fitment of the parts overall. So that's the basic overview of the working parts, let's get on and see how this thing actually shoots. So what's the Guncraft like to shoot? Well, it shoots pretty well. Uh, compared that to the Northwest Custom Parts, there's no real difference in feel of shooting, you know, kind of the, the recoil, the feel of the gun. If you've not shot a 22 Magnum AR before, they're a bit more lively than a, a 22 long rifle, uh, by no means as uh, as punchy as a 223, but it's kind of sitting in the middle there, really. You've got a little bit more muzzle climb, not a lot. Um, but yeah, Northwest and Guncraft, I didn't really notice any difference for uh, feel as an actual shooter. In terms of accuracy, they're both pretty accurate rifles, certainly for WMRs. Uh, I've shot inch groups with both of them at 100 yards with the right ammo, the right optics. I've also shot three inch groups at 100 yards with the, you know, the wrong ammo. Um, so yeah, find something it likes and it's a more than accurate platform, but both of them are more than accurate platforms. I didn't honestly see any discernible difference with accuracy uh, between the two. So I'm not going to show the accuracy testing in this video because it's probably going to be long enough as it is. Uh, I'll probably save that for the future if anyone's actually interested. Anyone apart from my mum, she's interested in all my videos. <laughs> she's telling all her friends, like, oh, he's doing so well on YouTube, I'm so proud of him. Yeah, it's not, it's not embarrassing at all, is it? So the one area I've found where the rifles differ is in terms of reliability. The Guncraft just seems to run an awful lot better than the Northwest Custom Parts. Now, I know there'll be some guys out there who are Northwest Custom Parts rifles screaming at me like, you know what you're talking about, mine runs 100%, you big sexy northern bastard. But first of all, anyone who says one of these rifles runs 100% is absolutely full of shit. You're always going to get the occasional failure, you know, whether it's whether it's the rifle, 
the magazines, the ammo, you're always going to get the occasional hiccup. That said, at least in terms of working parts, it would seem that the guncraft is a little bit more refined and it does seem to cut down on them malfunctions and them issues quite a bit. Now bear in mind I've got a sample size of, of one of each rifle, one, one Northwest and one Guncraft. Um, but before everyone starts losing their minds, let me kind of take you through what, what I'm basing that opinion on. So I had a Northwest Custom Parts rifle for the best part of three years. And uh, in that time I put say six, maybe seven thousand rounds through it. And a lot of that was just trying to get the gun working properly. Uh, I had quite major issues from the beginning. The, the rifle, when it was new, wouldn't make it through more than about two or three, four rounds before having some kind of major failure. But, like I said, there's, there's, there's quite a few still going out the door, I think, at the minute. And there's a lot knocking about out there. And you'll likewise hear people say that theirs runs really well. So, hopefully, mine was just a bad unit. You know, I can only give you... My experience, you know, my lived experience, my truth. So you know, take it for uh, take it for what it's worth, guys. So compare that to the Guncraft parts. Uh, so far, I've got just over eighteen hundred rounds through this, I think, and it is running a, a lot better. Uh, so like I say, cut down on them, uh, them issues quite a lot, them misfeeds and things like that quite a lot. It's not to say it's not without its niggles, because it definitely is. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it's a lot better. One of the issues I had with this rifle from the off was light strikes. Now, I'm not going to hold that against this gun because I also had light strikes with the Northwest. It's it's kind of a common issue with aftermarket triggers with these rifles. Uh, both the Northwest and the Guncraft, neither of them play well with certain aftermarket triggers. Um, I was having light strikes probably every five, ten rounds, dependent on ammo with this when I got it. But it was a quick, easy fix, just a different set of ammo springs and, and away we went. Not had a problem since. It's not skipped a beat in terms of light strikes. Like I say, same issue with the Northwest Custom Parts. So just be aware of that if you're planning on, on building one of these or, or dropping in another trigger or, or maybe you're having the occasional light strike in your gun. Uh, you might just have to have a look at that trigger, have a look at them springs. So one other little issue I had with a gun was when running suppressed, um, I would occasionally find that the rounds would flip about the magazine and jam. Uh, it's that's that the rounds flipping up flipping up out that magazine. Sorry, is like a is a common fault with a common issue with both this gun and the um, Northwest. Certainly when they were new, and the issue is let's have a look. The issue is the it's not the guns really. It's these it's these magazines, these feed lips here. Look, you see, you see how how kind of how short these feed lips are there, and what basically what happens is when you're uh, when you fire and obviously your bolt comes back, spits out spent uh, casing, goes to pick up a new round, and as it comes forward, it starts it starts stripping that round out of that magazine. And with these original magazines, the rim of the case leaves the feed lips before the nose of the round has actually entered the chamber. So the round is essentially just kind of floating between the feed lips and the chamber. And if that bolt's moving a bit too fast, it can sometimes flick it off to the side or generally it'll flick it up and trap it uh, trap it by the bolt but a uh, real simple quick fix for that was to use some of the new feed lips that uh, Guncraft are doing I'll put them up there you can see the the difference in the length of the feed lips there look uh, those are two different ones that just what they're said to do basically is just to keep the keep the rim of that round held in the feed lips until the nose is nice uh, nicely in the chamber there and then once it lets go the nose is already in the chamber the round can't go anywhere it has to has to chamber basically so that was a nice quick fix with that like i say it only happened when running suppressed i did used to get that issue quite a lot with the northwest custom parts uh, even unsuppressed to be fair but a lot of that comes down to that the added bolt weight in the gun craft that bolt moves a little bit slower than the northwest one because there's a lot a uh, lot more weight in, in the gun craft bolt so yeah, running those new feed lips actually stopped that issue 100%, not experienced it since. One thing I did find while using those extended feed lips though, and it was only with certain types of ammo and only on a couple of the sets of feed lips, was that when the round would go to chamber, it would actually kind of hang up on the way into the chamber. I'll roll some footage in there of that. And I think what the issue is, is obviously these are, well, if you don't know, these are 3D printed. I don't know if it's maybe an artifact from the manufacturer of them or just a little bit of tolerance or it might even just be certain mags and feeding certain rounds. Like I say, it didn't happen with all of them. It was only occasionally. But what would happen is as the round was be as the round was 
stripped out of the magazine, the nose obviously enters the chamber of the of the barrel, and it would feed at quite a steep angle. Once it had actually come out the feed lips, it would kind of jam up. Now, WMR is a bit of an awkward calibre. It's it's got quite a long straight walled case, certainly long for, for its diameter. So it needs to feed at a fairly straight, fairly shallow angle. And I think those feed lips, like I say, on, on, on one or two of them, uh, they would just cause it to feed at uh, quite a steep angle and causing it to jam up. But it was only occasionally, uh, I think the Aguila was the ammo that did it the most for me. But one little fix I found for it, look, was really simple. It was just to trim the feed lips back just a couple of mil. Just a couple of mil there, and you see, you can see how many magazines I can hold up to the camera. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> so you can see the those are the standard feed lips, those are the elongated feed lips, and those are the trimmed down elongated feed lips. So that kind of sits kind of in the middle lengthwise between those two, and that still allows the nose of the round to enter the chamber and the rim to still be held, but just not for as long. So it allows it to feed at a slightly shallower angle, and yeah, that. That magazine as well, by the way, that's just a base plate I've put on there, it's the same, the same magazine, Black Dogs. But yeah, that little uh, trimming modification stopped every issue with those magazines, and so far, using that, the guns run 100% suppressed and unsuppressed. So yeah, other than those few little kind of minor issues with the gun, I've, I've not really had any problems with it. I've been quite pleasantly surprised actually how well it runs. I was, yeah, I didn't think it would run that well at all. I thought there was a lot of hype about it to be fair. But yeah, um, really, really pleased with it. Uh, so far, like I say I've got nearly 2,000 rounds on it. It's run pretty much, well, everything I've thrown at it to be fair. In, in the beginning, when I first put the parts in the gun, the 30 grain ammo, certain types, it wouldn't always fully cycle. Uh, with them, it's short stroke maybe every tenth round or so. But after firing probably your know, three, four hundred rounds maybe through the gun, those parts have had a chance to kind of bed in to the rifle, and now it runs absolutely everything. Uh, 30, 40, 50 grains. What I've been running in it, all different types, all different um, manufacturers' weights, everything like that. So yeah, really, really pleased with it. Another difference that became apparent with the rifle pretty quickly was how clean the gun craft runs compared to the Northwest. Like I say, that, that heavier bolt helps keep that um, action closed longer, so more of the shit goes out that way and not back this way into the action. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, kind of uh, pleasant as well. It's one of my gripes about the Northwest. I think I mentioned before how dirty of a, of a calibre it was to shoot. And it still, it still is to an extent, you still get a lot of that powder, burnt powder and residue and stuff back into the action, but not as much. Uh, if, you're running, if you're running either of the guns suppressed, it's a different story altogether, you, you're fucking filthy. But, um, but yeah, running unsuppressed like this, it's, it's, compared to the Northwest, this is certainly a cleaner running rifle, which is nice. And in terms of functionality, obviously pretty much the same, it's an AR platform. You do get the forward assist if I can manage it here, the forward assist uh, feature on the gun craft that's them um, cuts are actually machined into the bolt there which is nice I know not everyone likes forward assist I quite personally I quite like it it's quite handy sometimes uh, you also do get the manual bolt hold open on the gun craft where you, I've not got it in the gun at the minute but you can actually manually lock the bolt back it's just running on a, a catch-22 bolt catch that's all it is so to be fair you, you could fit one of them in the northwest custom parts and it run if you wanted to but um other than that functionality wise they both take they both feed from the same magazines these black dog 14 round mags um they're both ars so yeah not much to say in that regard if i had to pick something that i wasn't keen on with the rifle it would be the barrel weight it is noticeably heavier than my northwest custom parts was but i get why they've done it Heavy barrel is good for a lot of things, good for accuracy, good for heat management, that type of thing. But for me personally, the type of shooting I do, I would have preferred a slightly lighter weight barrel. I know this was an early kind of production run. I think most of the, I think all the barrels to be fair were uh, were a heavy profile assassin barrels. Um, but from speaking to Rob, I know in future some of his builds, he's going to offer uh, different barrel lengths and profiles with them. So, you know, you could tailor your build to, you, you know, your own, a bit more to your needs. 
also speaking with him, I know in the future he's planning to offer more um, forge receivers and some billet sets as well, Guncraft billet sets, which is good. So yeah, I've got to say I'm pretty impressed with the Guncraft hardware, um, more so than I thought it was going to be. Uh, it's it's definitely uh, an improvement. It's improved in a lot of ways on the original Raven uh, bot design. And something else guys, I know from having some lengthy conversations with Rob from Guncraft on the phone and also speaking with Dean, they both really know the stuff when it comes to this platform. They're uh, continually testing things, listening to people's feedback and they kind of genuinely want to improve this platform which is nice to see. We've already seen things like the addition of the brass bolt weight there and the extended feed lips that we brought out. Um, you know, it's just little things always continually trying to improve the platform. I know in the future, I think they're looking at the uh, ejector and ext extractor placement on the gun, feed ramp angles, just little just little things that are just going to improve the platform that little bit, make it more compatible with other receivers. You know, uh, I'm all about that shit. It's a bit of a, a breath of fresh air, to be honest, because all too often in this country, when you buy a gun from someone, if you have issues, they're either don't give a fuck or they don't know how to fix the issues for you. So yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of nice to see someone with a, a bit of passion really about something they're doing. So yeah, I'm getting getting all choked up and emotional here. I might have to take five. <laughs> right, I've dried my eyes, I'm back. Uh, so yeah, really the only thing we need to get started with these guns now is these magazines, these 14 hour capacity magazines. Uh, I'm, I'll hopefully try and do a bit more with these magazines I've got. Slightly higher capacity mags there. Uh, you'll be pleased to know as well, I've tested my last round bolt load open in this gun and it works just as well as it did in the Northwest Custom Parts. So yeah, I'll be doing a bit more of that going forward. But yeah, that's it, the Guncraft. Let's put that magazine in. The Guncraft, AR-15 in 22 Magnum. Anyway guys, that's the video. You know the drill by now. Like it, share it, subscribe. Any comments, any questions, anything you think I've missed, or if you just plain old think I'm full of shit, get down in the comments and let me know. If you want to support the channel, I don't have a Patreon, but you can just go ahead and post your account details and pin number in the comments below and I'll sort the rest. And yeah, that's about it guys. Thanks for watching. Range 23, out. Fucking Range 23, out. Shocking, that was. One. So, what's it like to be behind this old girl banging away? <laughs> Can't do that one. Uh, I can't do that. The Guncraft AR-15 in 22 Magnum. I've gone too far. I've replaced them with... I've booked it already. My mum's friends make up most of my subscriber base. Comparing that to the Northwest Custom Barts barrel. Custom Barts?